Hey, good morning, friends. Pastor William, excited to see you this, well, it's almost light. And um, today I want to talk about one of the famous passages of the Bible, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. You know, this week I had, actually this whole season, I've been just getting rocked by a bunch of different challenges. And one hit me this past week that actually made me cry like two or three times. I just like, oh, I got overwhelmed, you know? And, and then someone comes along and, and quotes this, this Bible verse. And <clears throat> I don't know, somehow they just tossed it at me a little too easily. I'm carrying this heavy thought and, and they just toss this thing at me, you know, and um, a lot of times Bible verses can get taken out of context. Um, 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty one. it was on a nursery at a church. We shall not all sleep, but we all shall be changed, okay? If you've ever been in the nursery of a church, that's funny. And, and this is an often quoted Bible verse that I just read to you. Uh, it's a literal lifeline when things are coming down upon us that to know that God has a plan, a future, and a hope in mind for us. But again, sometimes it gets tossed a little too tritely out there. Uh, Jen Wilkins says, Beware of the Instagram Bible. Those filtered frames festooned with feathered verses, adorned in all manner of blossoms, saturated with sunsets, cold and curated just for you. Uh, beware lest it become your source of daily bread, telling partial truths. It comforts but rarely convicts. It emotes but rarely exhorts. It warms but rarely warns. It promises but rarely prompts. It builds self-assurance but box at self-examination. And, and the context of our passage is that um, God has been telling his people, listen, you got to stop worshiping other gods. You got to stop burning your children into the fire. You got to stop, you know, um, being so violent and, and taking advantage of the poor and the oppressing people. You, you got to stop your evil ways. And you know, a hundred times Jeremiah comes at him and finally God says, okay, enough. And he removes them to Babylon. He, he puts them in exile, all of them. They burn down Jerusalem. They tear down the temple. And, um, you know, poor Jeremiah, he got abused by telling God's word to the people. I think he had two converts and, you know, they sank him into deep mud. He, and they, they, they did all kinds of painful things to him and so nevertheless he's faithful and um you know god sends his people into to exile and, and but it's interesting what he does he doesn't go okay see you later no he tells them settle in build houses plant gardens take wives have children multiply there don't go about complaining and seek the welfare of the city in other words, they had a mission from God to press on where God had planted them. And, and you would think, well, you know, I'm, I mean, aren't they done? No. God sent them somewhere and God was going to go with them. God still had a purpose for their lives. Actually, check this out. The wise men that came and provided for Jesus when he was born, they came from this group of people put in exile. Isn't it wild to think that our faith could have some impact centuries later? You know, we could bring somebody to Jesus who brings somebody to Jesus who brings somebody to Jesus, and the next thing you know, you know, your, your, your ministry has continued to grow on earth even though you've gone to heaven. And, and so it's in the context of falling and failing and struggling and, and that God brings this message. And, and you see God's heart for the people. And, and, you know, there's a lot of, I've been to seminary, four seminaries, and, you know, some of them professors will say that this promise doesn't apply for us. It applied to folks in Jeremiah's day. Uh, the challenge is, if it's the living word, then, you know, 
God takes his word. When I'm in the Old Testament, he just applies it to my life presently right now. And so you have to decide, are you going to read it in context or are you going to understand this is just part of the narrative that God brings to his people? And, and some folks don't like this passage because it's used by the, the prosperity gospel preachers who hoodwink people into thinking that God wants them to be rich and successful. And God does want to bless us. And he prefers us to have prosperity. Okay, but that's not the main goal of God, our, our life here on earth. The main goal is that we are connected to him, all right? That our souls are saturated with the spirit of Jesus Christ. And, you know, there's blessings along the way. And, and, and to know that God has a plan for us, that he wants to give us hope to get through whatever we're dealing with, to provide a future, um, these are invitations for you to believe. And, and basically, you have to figure out, how do you see God? And how do you think God sees you? Because these two factors are going to determine what kind of experience you have with God. And, and God's revealed himself through nature. You know, in Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God. And Psalm, in Romans 120, since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities and eternal powers and divine nature have been seen. And it's kind of fun because lots of scientists, you know, after looking at the complexity of life, they realize that, you know, um, that there's just no way that they, there's not a designer's hand involved in our world. It takes more faith to believe in random chance than it does that there's a God who made us. But, but that's, you know, nature. We see God. We see him through the word. You know, oh my goodness, I love the Bible. And um, when you read the Bible, the word of God is given to you. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're in the Old Testament, New Testament, wherever you are. If you're in that word, God's going to speak to you and guide you. I mean, not every day. Some, you know, some days, not so much. But most days, you know, there's a word for you. And sometimes the word becomes your life verse or, or, or a, a statement that gets you through a season. I mean, just think about this. The miracle of the Bible is that you and I have the word of God in written form. But, you know, we see... God in Jesus Christ. Hebrews 1, 3. He's the exact representation of the nature of God. Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And, and wow. So who is Jesus? Well, he's the one who came and died for our sins. Um, you know, a lot of folks, they get upset that God allows evil in the world. And, and, you know, how can there be a God that's good if he allows evil? And how can it be all powerful if, if he allows, you know, something that hurts our lives? If the circumstances are lies. You know, we have to remember, we live in a fallen world. We brought sin into the world. He said, don't do it. We did it. We're dealing with the consequences. But here's what's radical. God steps in. He honors our free will, but then steps in and says, listen, I want you to grab hold of the lifeline that I'm giving you, myself, my spirit, my son, so that you can have life with me like we were supposed to have. You know, and in terms of evil in the world, I think I told you in the recent past about this woman who goes to Rwanda and she sees all the, the irrational murders that went on in a very short period of time and in the house of God. And, you know, she's ready to give God her last prayer that says, I don't believe in you. And just as she's about to speak, God interrupts her and says in a tender voice, this is what happens when people walk away from me. This is what happens when my love is expelled from a place. And she realizes, wow. So it's not that God's bad. It's that we're backing off, keeping him out of our lives, and then the world starts to collapse on itself. Think about our culture right now. You know, everybody's pushing God out, and what's happening? You know, it's collapsing in on itself. We're calling good evil and evil good, irrational you know, leadership decisions, all kinds of awkward stuff is underway. But 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 God's goodness, it, it's seen in the fact that we're making all these mistakes and he steps in, takes our sin, personalizes it, gives us his self, his eternal self. And, and that's the goodness of God. That's the plan that you are restored to the right relationship with him. The future you have is it's not only you know, that we get to have a, a blessed time on earth, that there's an eternal life waiting for us, okay? The hope that if, if Jesus is available, which he is, then we always have a tomorrow. And, and, you know, this is all based on his love for us. 
I, I want to tell you something, that God thinks about you all the time. In, in Psalm 139, it says, where can I go from you? And, and it talks about, you know, if I stand up, if I think, if I'm laying down, whatever I'm doing, you know these. You know my thoughts from afar. You're intimately acquainted with all my ways. To think that God Almighty is personally involved inside of your head and your heart, your dreams, your hopes, your disillusionments, all you are, God's aware. And when you turn to him, when you launch into that conversation, guess what? There's God caring for you with his amazing tenderness. And, and it's important that you understand how he feels about you because you're never going to draw near to somebody that you're suspicious of. He loves you, okay? He cares for you. He's for you. Look at all that he's done to, to bring you into a relationship with him, you know? And, and here's the radical thing about God. When you blow it, he says, okay, I got a plan. I got a hope. I got a future. And friends, he's got a plan for your life. You're not just wandering aimlessly through this world. You know, the difficulties that you're facing right now, these are God opportunities to grow you, to empower you, to transform you. And so I want you to understand that this plan, this future, this hope that God has, it's not just a famous Bible verse that we put on a plaque. It's not something that applies to Old Testament people. It's proven through the person of Jesus Christ that he has a plan, a future, and a hope for you. So let's connect to Jesus and have a fantastic day, tomorrow, and forever. Amen.